Hey everybody, it's Craig Syracuse of Walking Faith. Jackie, thank you so much for sitting down with me. I know we've been trying to, you know, get together for a while, Jackie Mulligan, but I really appreciate it. I think this time is, is the perfect timing. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Oh, thank you so much for having me. What a gift to be here. And uh, it's always an answered prayer to be able to share about reform wellness um, at any opportunity. So thank you. So before we get into reform wellness, just, just one thing quickly, and I want people to know what you do, your background, but this time, this is a time where people are filled with anxiety, stress. There is so much going on to add to the daily life. So if we, I want to go over that, but if you could tell us a little bit about why you got into reform wellness, why you started this organization, and a little bit about your background. Sure. Yes, absolutely. So um, I am a holistic nutritionist and a Catholic wellness practitioner. And um, I actually was a teacher several years ago. Um, and I started off, um, I'll always be an educator at, at heart, uh, but I taught Spanish um, for a few years. And I was also um, active in CrossFit and really just into my health in general. And um, I decided uh, mid mid school year, 10 year year to, um, to leave my very comfortable um, amazing job to move out to California where they offered uh, more opportunities to learn about functional health and functional medicine where I really felt called to, to learn more about. And, um, and so I started, uh, um, I, I got certified as a holistic nutritionist. I, I started learning more about functional medicine and I started working with people one-on-one -on -one. and um, it was great except for that um, no matter how much nutrition or sleep or stress management practices uh, that we went through in practice, especially even movement, um, there was still this desire for more. Mm -hmm. um, they wanted uh, to lean into more perfection with the way that they ate, lift heavier, move faster. While all of that was great, I realized that there was this major missing space and that was God. And that there was this hole um, in our well-being where we were just so concerned about the state of our bodies and and kind of in this like worldly view and not concerned enough about the state of our soul and so um through a lot of time spent in in adoration and a lot of prayer um, i finally had the courage to bring god into um the center of my practice which now feels like uh he was actually there all, all along i just kind of opened it opened up the space for him um but to really help people understand that health is about the state of our body and soul together. And so now I educate um, and empower people to reach their God-given potential um, using different tools and strategies um, to improve their overall wellness in, in, in body, mind, and soul. That's so interesting. And you said a couple of words that, that, that obviously stand out, the courage. You know, I also worked in the secular world and it was a big transition for me to go from secular to the world of faith and the Christian world. But I realized that I need to go through that journey because now I can use those relationships resources, you know, in, this, in the faith-based world. When you were going, when you had this transition, what was it like? Because I know, you know, when you look back, you know, we, we're full of fear and anxiety. What did you lean on during those times before you made that jump? Oh, I spent um, most of my time on my knees in, in a perpetual adoration chapel that was located right near my, my condo in San Diego. And, um, you know, my faith, I had, if it, if it weren't for, for God and, and for my faith, I, I don't know um, that I would have had the courage or the strength. Um, the, the logo for reform, you'll notice, is the Holy Spirit, and, and, and all the wisdom comes from, from the Holy Spirit. Um, that, that we do share. And so uh, it was, and it was also the people that were planted uh, in my path along the way. Um, my clients always say, thank you, because they learned so much from me. And I'm, I'm looking at them saying, no, you actually have no idea how much, how much I'm lo learning from you. Um, so, so through prayer, a scripture, a, a strong devotion to Mary, um, and, and then moving back to New York um, just almost three years ago, which is really where reform kind of uh, took its, 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 um, its roots, um, I, I was connected to the Franciscan Friars of the Renewal and um, I started working with them one-on-one -on -one and then eventually now work with their postulants and run their wellness program. And it was through their belief and their desire to pay attention to not only the state of their souls, which in religious life, you, you well know, they pay so much beautiful attention to the state of their soul. And if, if, if only we, we did that in the world to that degree, it would just, we, it would truly be a different place. Um, but there wasn't enough attention to the state of their bodies. And so there was this desire to really balance that more. And I think the, the thing that really 
continue to pave um, my, my uh, path of confidence and courage was that their prayer life increased immensely because their physical body changed. So their brain fog or their fatigue or their digestive issues were creating, when they, those were healed, we created more space for God. And so prayer was more intentional, um, that we, they were able to just receive um, Holy Spirit messages um, more clearly and just connect with God on a deeper level. And, and to me, um, that, that was, that was a, 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 you know, a success in, in itself, just learning that. Wow. That's, I mean, there was so many, I read a lot of the testimonials on your website. There was so many fascinating stories, which I want to get it to Father Joe Fitzgerald, who we worked with in the past. I love his honesty, but one <laughs> I, you know, I've been talking to a lot of people and even myself, I never like to say people. I like to talk more about myself, but this time in general, during this pandemic, there is a, a, an increase in anxiety, stress level, substance abuse, alcoholism. There are so many issues, right? I mean, even just the cravings of comfort food, because you know we have no control in, in a sense. So we're looking, grabbing things that sort of bring us control. What do we do during these times? Because you could justify any action right now and say, well, you know, we're, we're in a pandemic, I have the ability to drink or I have the ability to lash out. What do we do during these times? What are you doing personally? Yeah, I, I actually ran to St. Padre Pio for this one because um, he inspires a, a life of simplicity. And, and really when um, so much felt so chaotic in the world around us, um, even my, my personal world, I was supposed to get married this June 20th um, and have a, a beautiful wedding at St. Patrick's Cathedral. And as time went on, um, things were things were revealing that that was not going to happen on, on our timeline. And so again, back to surrender, Craig. Um, mm -hmm. But I had to learn to control the things I, I could and to let go of what I couldn't. And so um, St. Padre Pio inspires a life of simplicity where you eat, you sleep, and you pray at the same times every day. And those were things that I could control. I, I could control getting adequate sleep I could control having nourishing foods that are going to sustain um, a healthy body and, and also a, a healthy psychological response and good uh, digestion. And then also um, prioritizing my relationship with God and really understanding um, what was happening, how to, how, what, what he was doing and working in, in not just my life, but in the world right now and how to offer more to, to my clients. So when, when, when I feel chaotic, I have to do even more prayer um, mm. and stress management techniques because I, I don't have um, anything to pour out to my clients um, if, I, if I have an empty cup. So um, I've actually been helping people create their own formation, if you will, um, where they're dedicated to the few things that they can control. And if that means getting outside for a walk every day, if that means getting to bed and unplugging rather than the net the next Netflix series um, at a reasonable hour and, and choosing nourishing foods um, that are going to bring you closer to, to living well and, and, and a healthier version of yourself. Um, and, so, and so really just focusing on what you can control. You, you hit it on the head. And I speak about this every day. It's about having a strict routine. Yeah. Because like you said, you could easily watch Netflix, but you could sit in your pajamas all day. But it's about creating a routine or creating a, a relationship with Jesus Christ. And this is the perfect opportunity for anyone that says they don't have time. You know, I, I'm so busy. You have the time now to start a routine, healthy lifestyle, to go for walks, to pray. This is the time. So let me ask you, let's say, you know, we start this routine, right? And we're into prayer and we're into eating healthy. Is it a quick fix or is the, does it have, or do we need to get to the root of the problem? Let's say it's anxiety or fear. If I have a routine and then life gets back to the new normal, what happens to that fear and anxiety? Am I, do I need to get to the root of that problem where I can sort of cover it with these, uh, you know, with prayer and meditation? Yeah, well, just to go back to developing a routine, having an obedient schedule or having a few things that you choose to be obedient to a, a rhythm or routine, um, it actually gives you freedom. So knowing what time I'm going to go to sleep at night, knowing when, what time I'm going to pray, uh, knowing what, what, what I'm going to eat or not going to fuel my body with, it actually gives me freedom because I'm not thinking about those things. And also it's making me healthier. So um, as we well know in, in our faith, um, obedience leads to freedom and freedom leads to hell, <laughs> like, right? Like, so when we think worldly freedom, we're actually not free at all. We're tied down to, to the ways of the world. But when we're obedient to our faith and obedient to, um, to glorify God in the way that we live our lives and our bodies, we actually receive freedom. 
Um, and what we do, especially in uh, my practice, is we help people identify the root causes. So you are hit the nail on the head with anxiety. Um, a lot of people that I work with, I would say the most common things are digestive issues, anxiety, brain fog, um, overwhelm, and just an inability to uh, to not really handle life well. And especially right now, I mean, really, Craig, there's so, we've never lived in such a land of the unknown uh, before and, and really just forced to pause. And I think that that's, um, that's, it's just been such a beautiful gift mm -hmm. because um, we, we've kind of had to slow down and reprioritize and say, okay, what really is essential? What is really important? And, um, and why, why am I doing what I'm doing every single day? And so a lot of times uh, it takes being still and it's not always a quick fix. There are things that I will say you can do for a quick fix. And, and we all know getting one or two good nights of sleep in a row it does feel like a quick fix because you truly feel rejuvenated and like a, a different person. Um, but as far as getting to the root cause of things, it usually is like an onion where you have to peel back the layers and say, okay, why does this sin keep on happening? Or why is it that no matter um, you know, what I change, I still have anxiety? Like, What is this anxiety truly stemming from? And that's why in our practice, we don't just look at the, the things that we label as, um, as health, like nutrition and sleep and stress management, which we do focus on all of those things, but we're looking at personal growth, your relationships, your faith life, everything, because that encompasses who we are as a whole. You, you and I have a lot in common. So let's just, let's go. <laughs> you're right. And, and, you know, listen, I read all the time and I've read so many motivational books and all that. And, and what you're talking about and why we need faith, or the, let's just say the difference between like a motivational book and, mm -hmm. and the world of faith. One will tell you, go after worldly possessions, money, fame, will make you happy. Right. And you can you can fulfill that anxiety with money and, and, and material items. But the world of faith and we know through our prayer, through our faith, if you follow your purpose and what God has given you as a gift and your assignment, you will receive joy. So you it's not a quick fix, like you said. But if you if you focus on things that are not within the world of faith and not in, you know, in the Bible, and not scripture, you will always be disappointed. And you and reform wellness. What you're saying is exactly what we need. It's we need to get to the root of the problem and we need to fill it with scripture, with, with health and wellness, but also to, to build a relationship with Jesus Christ. So listen, I go to the gym, not now, but every day, right? What is the difference? I know besides, you know, the, obviously the faith element, what's the difference between saying go to the gym, getting a personal trainer and nutritionist versus reform wellness? Well, the first thing is inviting God into it. So you would, you know, if we were working together, I would still invite you or, or recommend that you go to the gym and work out in a certain way. But because we're looking at the whole person, we would look at um, why are you, let's get really clear on the why. Why are you going to the gym to begin with? What are your goals? Um, how are you using that to glorify God in the way, in the gift of your body? You know, we forget that that our bodies aren't ours. They're, they're, they're given to us as a gift and how we use them um, is meant to glorify God. And that can be it for, for a, a vast um, you know, way, um, uh, different reasons that, that we do so. And so um, first we can be clear on the why, but it's also now doing things with intention. And so it's living life with intention and living with him at the center. And so what once might have been a very beneficial workout for you, may look very different when we look at your life as a whole and say, okay, you're really stressed out. You're not digesting well. A high intensity exercise or uh, training um, program might not be the answer for you right now. Maybe we need to pull it back and let this part heal and be still for a while. Or quite the opposite, where stress is not high, there's not a lot of motivation. We got to stimulate the, the sympathetic nervous system a little bit and, 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 and you know, use more of, of what the body has to offer. So it's how we can really customize and personalize you as a whole to help you reach your God-given potential in, in either direction. I like that. So what if somebody comes, like, how do you, do you tailor programs based on, you know, health and wellness? So I go to the gym or went to the gym every day. Now, of course not. You know, my, my lifestyle, healthy eating is okay, but I have a strong faith-based, strong relationship with Jesus Christ. What if somebody comes and doesn't have a relationship with Jesus Christ? What isn't, you know, like, are you able to tailor programs based on their walk? Yeah, that's a great question. Thank you for asking that. So many people uh, will write to us and say, I'm not Catholic, uh, I'm not Christian, or some even say I'm atheist, um, but I'm really drawn to reform wellness. Uh, but I don't want to talk about God, but I want to work together. And I say, sure, of course, but like, please come. And, um, and w throughout their health questionnaire or within our work together, they'll say, um, I actually want to hear a little bit more about this God guy. Um, and why, why do you talk about him? And, and you know, what do you mean when you say faith? And I think there is um, it's a beautiful channel and it's such a gift that 
um, we're able to focus on body and soul because when people don't have the, um, the education or didn't have the ability uh, to understand um, or weren't raised with God or, or had circumstances where God wasn't um, uh, active uh, in their perspective in their life, um, had a lot of struggle or, or suffering, um, they don't know how to, to approach him. And it could feel really, really in, um, overwhelming and um, and so when we focus on health, it's kind of the small window of op uh, opportunity where we can say, hey, invite God in by the way that you choose to eat today and invite God in by the way you choose to uh, change your relationship in the way that you speak to your spouse or, or treat other people. And so it's different opportunities. We don't have to define it as, you know, this is the only way because that's not God. Um, but, but we know he is the way and he is the truth um, and he is the light and we need to let him pave our, our way. And so, um, so when I actually just spoke to a client yesterday in, in Copenhagen and, and um, Copenhagen is one of the most amazing places, happiest people in the world, um, but there's not a ton of faith there. And, and one of her first questions was like, do I have to believe in God? And I paused because I thought, well, that's kind of up to you. You don't have to believe in him, but like, we're going to talk about him a little bit. Um, and I'm going to meet you where you are. But I, I, I do often help people pivot out of their comfort zones because we're never going to grow when we're comfortable. You know, I, I do, I want to stretch you like God stretches us and makes us uncomfortable. Like we all are right now living in this pandemic and, and really help them um, to realize that it is in our discomfort where we're going to, to grow. So. And I love that. And actually I was writing that thinking to myself, you know, in a sense, like you're an evangelist, like you are using your God-given gift, communication, health and wellness to reach people where they are, but people that might not want to talk about faith, but are interested in health and wellness. So in yeah. a sense, you're saving their soul through mm -hmm. health and wellness, but in, in the same sense, you're saving their soul by preaching them the word of God. Because through your, just the way you act, the way you interact with people, the, there's something different about you and people want to know why. What makes you so different? And through that sort of that interest, that's when you can, con you know, the conversion starts. The seed is planted. They say, there's something different about Jackie Mullen. There's something different about reform. And that's how you're able to evangelize. It's so interesting. And because you lived and you worked in the secular world, you're able to sort of connect in both worlds. It's fascinating. I mean, so what do you think like the ultimate plan is for your life, for your business? Like, where do you see yourself? Like, what's, what, where do you, when you, I don't want to say success, but when do you know you're, you're sort of like on the path? Well, I feel uh, honestly like my, I promised myself that my business coach was going to be Jesus. And as much as I, I've wanted to, to deviate and say, no, 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 I want you know, somebody to write the script for me. Um, I, it keeps me obedient in my prayer life. And so um, what success would look like for me is reaching as many people as he wants me to reach um, in whatever way that looks like. Um, there's, of course, dreams of writing a book or a series of reform your relationship, reform your prayer life, reform your, your gym, um, all of these different, you know, parts of reform. Um, but there's also, um, uh, you know, even working one-on-one -on -one with people is it brings me so much joy and I think part of the reason why this has been, been so dynamic for me is that I literally have worked with three-year-olds and 80-year-olds um, spoken to thousands of people at a time and had one-on-one -on -one interviews like this and I just keep saying yes and trying to stay obedient to to what's being asked um, so as far as I'm concerned it feels successful just because I, I, I truly feel that God is in this and, and working through my clients um, the amount of conversions that I've experienced of, of body, mind, and soul, the, the, the way that people have truly healed um, from the inside out. I mean, I had a client just during Lent um, who uh, went to confession for the first time, um, for the first time in, in like 20 years. And um, she, we were laughing because she got to do it from her car and it was just safer for her. And I said like, look how good God is being Ooh. to you. And then she wanted to go back to mass and she got to do it from home for a little while. And it was just it. really beautiful to watch people on their own journeys. Um, and the gift of what, working with religious life and, and priests, um, it's just, yeah, to me, it's, it's already exceeded what I ever dreamed of. And I, lo I love that you said that because I, I've been talking to priests a lot and I'm like, you know, that, that, you know, not all of them love the whole streaming of the mass. So now we're doing mass yeah. in my parish in the car. And I'm like, you realize you're planting a seed because if someone feels uncomfortable going to church, they're seeing it on, on the computer screen, they're seeing it on TV, they're sitting in their car, you're, you're, you're opening up the doors for them to come back to church. This pandemic has really stripped everything away. What we idolized, what we thought was important, our perspective has changed. And I really see an increase in vocations. So you've met 
I mean, you have countless amount of people. Yeah. What are some of the success stories and some of the stories that you really hold true to your heart? But then also within that, you, you have such a responsibility. Like I, I talk on, on Zoom and I'm very conscious about how I live my life because the last thing we want to be is oh, a yeah. addiction. So, but it's, it's difficult. I, I mean, I'm not, listen, I'm not perfect at all, but I know it's difficult. I monitor everything I say and do all the time. How do you do that? I and mean, you have so many clients, people yeah. look for guidance. How do you sort of have that balance? I have to have balance. And you know, there's, there's many times in the year where I pause and say, I have to reform my own life. And, and, and you know, what, what, what does my health look like? Um, a lot often times in my practice, I'll use um, the analogy of a health bank account where I'll say, okay, let's assess the current state of our health. So just like you would do an examination of conscious, like, where am I? Where's my soul? Where's my mind? Where's my body? Like, am I actually healthy? Um, like I mentioned earlier, I can't really pour from an empty cup. So if I'm not full, um, I have nothing to give. And there are days where I have, you know, eight clients in a, at a time and I'm outpouring all day long. Um, I'm, I'm very intuitive and very sensitive. So that makes it even, it, you know, I, I, I kind of give all, all of my heart that I, that I can. Um, but I have to be really obedient, Craig. I mean, I, honestly, uh, it's, I know that part of the reason that I work with religious life and that God put me in their path first was so that I can mirror um, to, to the best of my ability in, in the world, um, how they live. And so the first and the last hour of my day, no matter what, if you're, you know, my family, my friend, my fiance, you know that I'm starting and, then, uh, and ending my day with prayer. And, um, when, when I could go to mass, it was at daily mass. And, and, and when it's at home, it's been, it's been really different, but there is never a time where the gospel or my prayer doesn't seep into my, my meetings. And it's just, um, is incredible. So, so really being diligent there and walking the walk. And it's a lot of pressure, as you say, you know, um, but, but to do this confidently and to do this well, I, I wouldn't be able to not walk the walk because um, people are looking up to me and I understand that. Um, but the good news is that we get to look up to him and that it's, it's not all up to me. So. I love it. And like you said, this is not a job. This is your work. And there's a difference between job and work, calling, vocation. And that's why you're able to, to sort of, it's not like you turn it on on a Monday and then on a Tuesday, you're doing something else. So, and, and I know I asked you 10 questions at the same time, but just what are some of the success stories? Like Father Joe Fitzgerald really resonated with me because of his honesty. What mm -hmm. are some of the stories, the CFRs? Can you share one story before we go? Sure. You know, I'm going to share a, a, a little bit about Father Joe and a little bit about Father Innocent Montgomery. Um, they're, they're totally different stories. Um, but Father Joe um, was a former Olympic athlete and um, he's, he's just, he was hungry for, for, for like the physical change and he was so motivated. He has such a, a background um, in, in, in diligence and obedience to both the Lord and, and, you know, physical output. And, um, he was just so honest, as you mentioned, about the the things that were in his way. You know, living in a in a in a rectory in a shared home where like food choices weren't exactly uh, the best, and where schedules were insane. Priests are so busy. I mean, even now we're going to have a busier schedule. Um, so are religious life. So we think that um that they've, they've got it all together and they do for the most part. But stress is usually really high. Um, so I think his his beautiful um, humility, um, but desire, you know, I can't want it more than, than my clients. And so when people come to me with this strong desire to be better all around, that was Father Joe. And, um, and I mean, he still calls me coach. He's the only person I think will ever allow me to, uh, to call me coach. Um, but he, but it's just so beautiful because um, he still is using the tools that, um, that he learned in, in, in our life together uh, or in our world uh, and work together. And he just, um, he, he uses them to, to, to tap in and say, okay, where do I need to improve? And, and, and you know, now he understands that his stress is a big part of, of you know, his overall well-being. Um, and then there was Father Innocent, who um, he wrote so eloquently about his uh, inability to sleep through the night, how his energy was totally flatlined, dealing with digestive issues. So we had to do a totally different protocol where we were looking at gut health, diet specifics. Um, and now, you know, you know, the fryers get most of their food uh, or all of their food donated. So to have um, a, a strict diet protocol is not exactly, you know, in, 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 the, in the documents there of what they sign up for. Um, but he did it and he did it well. Um, and he was so obedient to, um, to our protocol. And it was three to six months of pretty hard work as far as, you know, not eating gluten and not eating sugar or dairy, um, you know, 
really intense um, sleep schedule. And within a couple of months, he was sleeping through the night for the first time in, in years. Um, and uh, digestive issues are completely gone. His energy, I, I mean, I call him Tigger because you know, he just bounces <laughs> around. Um, and it was just so beautiful. So, um, but again, as I mentioned earlier, the common theme was he can hear the Lord more clearly. Mm -hmm. And he said, actually, he put this beautiful analogy together where he said, what I feed myself ends up being what I feed the people that I preach to. And so quite literally the food on his plate or the um, overwhelm that could be on his plate is going to result in how he feeds the people that he's, um, you know, called here to, to serve. That's beautiful. And, you know, just on a side note, when, whenever I hear priests, when they're honest and humble, because they, listen, if I say I'm filled with anxiety, everyone, yeah, I understand. But when you hear it from a priest or a, a, a religious life, it just resonates with oh, you yeah. more. And a lot of them aren't honest, you know, and, and they just, for whatever reason, they, they sort of were able to separate it. So when I read that, and I, and actually, Father Joe, we did a Biking for Vocations documentary with him. So, and he, he rode a bike across the country, which I was against. <laughs> and so, and I know his background, um, but this is, this has been honestly fascinating. I, I'm so excited that we, we had this opportunity to speak. If there's one thing, you know, I want you to share obviously your website, but if there's one thing people can walk away with or they can use during this pandemic, during this time, what would it be? I would say one of the pillars of health that we use is space. And I'm going to invite people to use this space that we've been given. I, I used to say time, and I realized that actually not a lot of people were given more time, but we have been given more space to open up and allow God to come in. And if that's more space digestively, perhaps with practicing fasting, if that's more space in prayer to allow God to come in, um, if that's more space in nature to move your body. Um, I want people to just pray about how they can create more space in their life for healing of their body, mind, and soul. I love it. Jackie, can you share your, your information, website? How can people get in contact with you? Sure, yes, of course. So um, we have a, a wide array of services from one-on-one -on -one consulting to online group uh, seminars and classes. Um, when we can be in real life, we have assemblies and, and things like that in school. Um, but you can visit our, our website. It's reformwellness.co. CO. Um, and then uh, we're also on Instagram. So newly to uh, Instagram is reform. So it's reform underscore, I'm sorry. Yeah. Reform underscore wellness. And then my handle is Jackie underscore Mulligan. So, um, so people can reach us there. And then again, the website is reformwellness.co. I would advise people to definitely reach out to Jackie. I think this is the time, like you said, we all, you know, we're all in a situation now where we all need to reform. We really do. We need to really look at what's important in life, our priorities. And I think this is the perfect time. There are no excuses. And I don't want people to be afraid at all. I know when you start to build a relationship with Jesus Christ, people get a little frightened, but sometimes we're filled with fear and anxiety. But I think it's necessary for our health, for our soul for our wellness. Jackie, it's honestly been a pleasure speaking with you. Guys, I, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Always remember, you have the ability to inspire and evangelize through words and actions. God bless you. God bless you.